The United States is presently in the throes of a mass strike revolt of our population against their government. Lyndon LaRouche was the first to identify in August that the American people have recognized that their lives are threatened by the actions and policies of the Obama administration and the associated stooges in the Congress. The health care debate has become the rallying point, but the real underlying issue is that we are at the end of the present global monetarist system, the British imperialist monetary system. The response by the British Empire through the monarchy directly has been to cut increasingly the costs of maintaining the population, to bail out the empire by forcing a forced euthanasia policy designed to deliver early deaths to the sick and elderly who the empire does not wish to be a burden on their dying system. As we have documented on this website, this forced euthanasia policy is now estimated to be responsible for one out of every six deaths in the United Kingdom during 2007 to 2008. As we shall show here, it is the British royal family and their associates who are the direct source of the Barack Obama administration's genocide policies and his continued attempt to implement them against the people of the United States. Of course, if you truly know the British Empire, this does not surprise you. For them, there's nothing new in the idea of implementing policies of mass genocide to control or cull the population and defend their monetary system. That bestial view of mankind has governed the actions of the empire since its very foundations. But we should let the ideologues of the empire speak for themselves. Instead of recommending cleanliness to the poor, we should encourage contrary habits. In our towns, we should make the streets narrower, crowd more people into the houses, and court the return of the plague. In the country, we should build our villages near stagnant pools. But, above all, we should reprobate specific measures for ravaging diseases, and restrain those benevolent but much mistaken men who have thought they are doing a service to mankind by protecting schemes for the total extirpation of particular disorders. The lowest strata of people are reproducing too fast. Therefore, they must not have too easy access to relief or hospital treatment lest the removal of the last check on natural selection should make it too easy for children to be produced or to survive. Long unemployment should be a grounds for sterilization. In the event that I am reincarnated, I would like to return as a deadly virus in order to contribute something to solve overpopulation. So today, following the July-September 2007 crash of the world financial system, we find the British monarchy caught again, red-handed, along with their assets such as Tony Blair imposing a genocide policy. You have the right to be thoroughly disgusted, but not surprised. At this point, the survival of your nation requires you to know your enemy. On September 2, 2009, it was reported in the London Telegraph that a group of medical experts had determined that one in every six people who died in the United Kingdom from 2007 to 2008 died from involuntary euthanasia. The group of experts drafted a letter referring to a national crisis in patient care, as patients are diagnosed as close to death by a medical team, then that diagnosis is treated by inducing death. Further, recent provisions have been added to the British National Health Service's National Strategy Report, including instructions for falsifying death certificates to show that the patient died of natural causes and not homicide, as this was done at Hadamar and other health facilities under Hitler's T4 program. So this is no accident or coincidence, but a top-down, intentional policy which originated as a pilot project developed under none other than former Prime Minister Tony Blair and his royal health advisor Simon Stevens. First, in 1999, Stevens, under Blair's direction, established Britain's National Institute of Clinical Effectiveness to ration health care. Nice. Three years later, in 2002, he arranged a contract between the United Health HMO in the United States and Britain's NHS to develop policies to restrict the access of the elderly to Britain's hospital beds so they would not be, quote, 
clogging the beds. The Involuntary Euthanasia Pilot Project, brought in as British government policy under Stevens and Blair, was developed at the Marie Curie Hospice in Liverpool and given the name the Liverpool Care Pathway for the Dying Patient, a program which calls for a medical team and senior doctor to diagnose when a patient is near death and following that determination proceed to put the patient under deep sedation, in some cases a near comatose state. From there, the heavily sedated patient is denied the fluids and nutrients needed to keep them alive, and they are killed in their hospital beds. It was under Blair and Stevens in 2004 that this program was picked up and promoted by Britain's National Health Service through the notorious NICE agency. But the nationwide implementation of this genocide policy was under the direction of the British monarchy itself. With the acceleration of the global financial meltdown, the British Empire likewise had to accelerate the fascist austerity policies, and the government-funded charity and think tank The King's Fund was the monarchy's vehicle to coordinate and implement a mass killing program through the hospitals. The King's Fund dates back to the late 19th and early 20th century, when it was set up by King Edward VII as a fund to handle the health of the poor Britons who had no health care. It remained functioning in that capacity throughout the 1920s and 1930s during the race science, sterilization, and euthanasia spree. But following the changes to the British health system after World War II, the fund found other projects. By 1986, the King's Fund was handed over to Prince Charles, who is now the president, and whose record for complicity in prematurely ending lives is clean as a whistle. In 2008, the fund was recommissioned by Queen Elizabeth, and Prince Charles was tasked with accelerating the empire's mass murder techniques, which were developed through the collaboration of Prince Charles King's Fund and the Murray Curie Hospice Center, where Charles also served as a president since 2000. By June 2008, the Murray Curie Hospice was merged with the King's Fund in order to develop the contribution of both organizations to the further improvement of end-of-life services across the UK. That is, a program to eliminate the sick and the elderly. So we find that one in every six deaths that occurred in the United Kingdom from 2007 to 2008 were the result of this involuntary euthanasia health program, care of the British royal family and their assets. Thus, this death care program has, since July 2008, been promoted as national policy in the UK, adopted in over 300 hospitals, 130 hospices, and 560 care homes in England. And British representatives have been pushing for its implementation in other countries as well. Enter Dr. Death of the 21st Century, Simon Stevens, who not only worked with Tony Blair to pioneer the forced euthanasia program, later adopted by the NHS in NICE, and who remains a trustee of the King's Fund, but who a few years after leaving the Blair government came to the United States equipped with the royal family's genocide policy. Stevens became the vice president of the largest U.S. private HMO insurer by revenue, United Health Group. From this position, Stevens has been collaborating with the Obama administration in the charge to bring in this British model of forced euthanasia in the United States. He led a massive propaganda campaign for Obama's so-called health care reforms throughout 2009, and in May he announced the creation of the United Health's Center for Health Reform and Modernization. Stevens, acting from within the private sector, set up this program to determine ways President Obama could cut the public Medicare costs by up to a half trillion dollars through his intended health reforms. Of course, as we see today in Britain, you can save all kinds of money on public health if you're systematically eliminating the public. So the American people are up in arms as their president continues to push the mass murderous model of the British nice healthcare system packaged as a U.S. health reform to reduce our budget deficit. As Lyndon LaRouche writes in his recent paper, Nero was also dumb, Obama did not invent these policies. We must not forget that his existence as president was orchestrated by a vast funding by alien, British, and other international forces to serve those policies. 
Those have been and remain presently the self-same policies which, if allowed to continue, will wipe every presently reigning government on this planet from a continued existence, while plunging the planet as a whole into a deep, dark age for more than a generation yet to come. But you can't blame Obama for creating the policy. He's not intelligent enough to do that. But his failure to drop that policy now will doom us in the way LaRouche indicated.